Welcome to History on the Move. Over the next four weeks, we are going to take a look at the amazing renovation project on the iconic Daniel Adamson. Now, this week, we are taking a look at the history of this incredible steamship. She is the Cinderella of the ship world. Built in 1903 as a humble twin screw steam tug tender, the SS Daniel Adamson then led a double life on the Manchester Ship Canal. Serving not only as a tug, the Danny was also transformed into a luxury director's launch. In this role, the vessel carried the likes of King Faud of Egypt, the Sultan of Zanzibar and General Eisenhower in the Second World War. Beneath her classic Edwardian tugboat exterior lies a secret inside. A superb Art Deco style double-deck saloon installed in 1936 for her VIP duties. Close your eyes, or rather open them, and you could be aboard one of the legendary ocean liners of yesteryear. Containing that essential Art Deco accessory, the cocktail bar, potential trade contacts were wined and dined aboard the tug tender's highly stylish saloon to boost business for the ship canal. Fast forward 40 years and seismic changes in trade and transport were rapidly occurring. As container ships grew too big for the canal, so its business shrank. SS Daniel Adamson, named after the ship canal's company's founder and first chairman, like him, became a relic of a fading age. The scrap man's acetylene torch beckoned. Yet, surprisingly, the little coal-fired 173-ton vessel, now Britain's last surviving steam-powered tug tender, cheated the shipbreakers to become an exhibit at Ellesmere Port's Boat Museum. However, the Danny eventually fell into dereliction through lack of cash. Her only visitors were vandals, smashing up the interior and starting fires. Once again, the scrap man's acetylene torch beckoned, threatening to turn this maritime icon into razor blades. But step forward, tugboat skipper Dan Cross. Well, it all started as a friend of mine, and I was having a cup of coffee with him one day. And he just happened to mention to me, he said, oh, it's bad news about the Danny, isn't it? And I said, why, what, what do you mean? And when he said it was going to be scrapped, I thought, yeah, it was, you know, it was, it was a shame, of course it was. Didn't really think a lot more of it. And then I went back to work. I think it was our superintendent engineer. Uh, he came aboard one morning to see how things were going. And we were having a chat about various things. I just happened to mention it, so that Danny Adamson's being scrapped. And he turned around to me, he said, oh, it's a shame, that, isn't it, in this day and age, he said. He said, do you want to see if you can get hold of it? And then Friday afternoon, it ended up with me doorstepping the ship canal company at Bridgewater House in Runcorn uh, one Friday afternoon and basically refusing to move until they agreed to, to speak to me. So I ended up in their big meeting room and they put me through the mill a little bit. You know, we've got to get rid of her because she's become a hazard with, with vandals and what have you. And now all of a sudden, there's, there's, you know, you're, you're creating merry hell, we want to scrap it. I just said, well, you know, at least give it a chance. Following tough negotiations, the Manchester Ship Canal Company agreed not to send the Danny to the scrapyard. Tune in next week where we see work begin on the Daniel Adamson as the restorations get underway.